number four is a little girl. Look at her, Michael. She's two pounds. I'm pretty sure she's a bug skin because of these markings there. Um, and the white stripe that you can't really see. Look at that nose. Oh, you are so freaking cute. You're so cute, girly. I can't even think about the babies. Oh, look at that. Look at those babies, kick. Let's see. I think I do think you have more than one. They're probably gonna be some really good soccer players. She's like, really? Is that what you think? That's everyone over there. Hi, Ava. How's it going? What is happening? Good afternoon. Afternoon? Oh, you're pooping while you're laying down? That's a new one for you, Clara. Couldn't see anything. <laughs> There's Clara. Annabelle with her girls. One thinks that she's gonna be dinner or something. Uh, mocha between my legs. Excuse you, young lady. This little man. Clarita. <gasps> you guys don't have any more water. Okay. I'll bring some. Hi. You look very pretty. Although I didn't do a good job shaving you. <laughs> You're a very pretty lady. Okay. So since I shaved Clara... She's been sleeping in this sweater. It's actually for a dog. This is Hope's. But it's really nice because it's, it, it's super warm. I want to show you this. Not the conditions that I was going to show it to you. But this is um, the piece of furniture that I was telling you where I want to keep kidding stuff and... I already have some stuff here, but I really want to organize these drawers because that's what makes me happy. But I have some of these that I made for the babies and I just washed them. I even bleached this one because they got really nasty since they're white. Um, you know, it's all going to be cleaned and organized here. And that way I know that I where everything is and if I'm in a position where I need help, or I need something from here that I know exactly where it is. But all of this, it's going to get eventually organized. I took the table out of here and I'm gonna do a little, um, not only organizing of stuff that I need, but like, I want to start bringing all my supplies to the milk room now that we don't have any more mice. Thanks to my buddy over there, Karen. He just got out a couple weeks ago. He's been inside and in his kennel for months at this point. I would say at least six months. So as he gets used to it, I wanted to create a little space for him. And this is what it's going to be. Right now, there's... A blower and alfalfa and other things that shouldn't be up here but my hope was to put him up there leave that open so he can go to sleep if he wants to sleep in there in his bed that now it's in the washer and have all his kitty litter and food and everything up there and so it's kind of his own corner and then down here Again, it's not organized, but we have the feed. We have these things that I used to sit outside with the goats. And a couple of these bins with straw, because we don't keep a lot of straw. We buy it little by little. But both of these have straw inside, and I, I'm going to show you. I mean, I've been trying to come up with different ways to not use so much, because there's too many girls in 
at night and they can pee and poop all night long and I have no problem but if they want to stay there during the day which they've been then that's a different story so that's pretty much the story of the kitty but since he sleeps here I don't have any mice problem so I'm reorganizing this today Sunday I'm going to finish all, all, all my organizing and I'm gonna start bringing everything that I have inside so I can make more room in the pantry that I was using for the goats. It might end up being just for soap and stuff like that. But these are the things that I cannot fit in here. And I do have an extra shelf that I can even hang here. It's like pretty big and it'd be awesome. But this kitty loves to come to any surface and start like he'll go like this and drop everything on the floor so the lighter stuff that I'm sure he'd love to play with I'm gonna hide it in one of these drawers and it will change with time and as soon as I have it ready I'll show it to you but like you know I had some paper towels here before the kitty was in here and the mice was they were using it to build nests so I have a lot of things that need to be organized here like I want to find a permanent spot where I can hang this and you know just put the babies but it has to be not against something like if it's against here it kind of and it messes up I I mean I've had a difference of a pound from one day to the next on babies and it's because it depends where I put it and if it's leaning against something grabbing it by the hand is kind of the most effective way but um, the babies sometimes they move too much sometimes I have to put them in a bag or you know if they're bigger I can put them in this little sling but it's still a struggle for them not to fall from either uh, because again they grow and they turn into little squiggly things so that's another thing that I have to figure out I kind of have a really nice setup here and again I do have quite a few drawers like right now I need to bring more towels these are just for kidding purposes um, then I have some blankets that I think I'm gonna put these things here Another thing that I really like about the milk room is that this little shelf or different shelves build, built out of the same kind of framing, I guess. If they're glass, usually he won't throw them, so I can store that here. But like this for shaving them, I mean, they're just different things that I want to organize in here. And know exactly where everything goes and have everything labeled. Like here there are syringes, gloves, cotton. Um, I put labels, even though it seems like I'm just going to have a party here. That's where, what those are. And I also need to figure out the mess here. Like I had the straw inside that area and it was all falling and Kitty was playing with it. So yesterday I thought I'd bring those bins that I had empty and you know that's that's how I'm gonna start. But I do have a lot of things here that I want to have ready. I also want to have a specific spot just in case I need to bring a theme in here. Um, I'm thinking that, you know, with having the babies that are going to leave, you know, soon enough they're going to leave. But right now I have the babies and the moms inside the barn. And it's just, the babies are small, so it's still okay. But I want to have an extra space just in case I need to bring a theme here. I do have that little kennel that it's kind of a playpen that I can set up here. I used to set it up inside the house or inside the trailer when we have goats inside. So if I need to bring her here, then that'd be perfect. And 
again, it's all gonna come with time, but right now I'm trying to have as much as I can ready for when Athene have her babies. Athene enjoying her time alone. That's how her belly's looking. I'm gonna bump her in a second. But I wanted to show you her little otter. Look at that. She's starting to fill up and um, she is starting to feel hard. Uh, we're still working on training. She's doing better. I am hoping her medial is starting to show now. I don't know if you can see, but it has like a little round and otter shouldn't be like straight. You should have like a little roundness at the bottom and even though she hasn't freshened and you know I'm still waiting to see her side attachments and all the other things that I'm looking for as far as improving on Clara um, I'm still you know waiting to see those things but her udder her teeth look very long for being a first freshener to be honest with you they get longer when the kids nurse and with milking and everything and her medial is good because otherwise these teats would be pointing outwards and they are going down. Uh, they could be a little bit more <laughs> in but now you can see her medial over there. She just needs to be shaved so that's what I'm gonna do right now. It's probably not gonna be great lightning but my tripod uh, I forgot the attachment to put the camera on. Now, I've done this before on her, so she's kind of used to the, the sound, but she's not gonna stay still for me, because even if she's eating, <laughs> they don't like this. It's mostly about being restricted as far as movement. But I really want to see her utter develop. So I'm trying, and again, it's kind of tricky. And if you're gonna do this, you're gonna have to be very patient. But now can you see how her definition is showing better? It's kind of a little heart in the middle. I'm telling you, since I started shaving them this year, I cannot believe what I was missing out before. <laughs> I really can't. And I'll show you because I feel like it's so dark there. You cannot see it. Sometimes you have to, like, if you want to... She's really upset right now. Let me give her some more grain. Yeah. She can have uh, quite a bit more of grain that she would typically get because she's getting to the last part of her um, pregnancy and they do need more sugar by then so I'm not too worried about her having some extra but I have to say that if you want to start evaluating and comparing after they have their babies if you want to see the improvement that you're doing or that you are breeding into your program or the non-improvement there is no other way but to shave your girls I'm sorry to say this but you can't see the details in a furry udder and I'm not shaming anybody here because I mean you choose to do whatever you want with your herd and for the last two years I've never done it but I want to show you the before and after so you can kind of get an idea. Now, now you can see right here, these are her side attachments. And look how great they look. Can you see it here? Nah, not so much because of the hair. So the, the hard part is getting into all the crevices and probably my hand is in the way, but at least you're listening to me. <laughs> I want to think that that's worth something as I'm doing it. Because last time when I did it with the girls, um, I didn't end up sharing it. And I'm going to take the time to shave her around her booty area too. 
I wish she would put her tail up because I think I'm in the way of you seeing this just because of her tail because I'm trying to see what I'm doing basically but there is no technique in what I'm doing honestly I've seen these videos pop everywhere especially around kidding season but uh, I'm doing whatever I can because I not great at it yet but you only get better if you keep trying <laughs> and that's my idea of doing this to the girls not only helps me evaluate them better she's looking at me like what are you doing what is that thing in my butt area um, I also the last girls I also shaved a little bit down their legs because it helps with when you need to clean them up Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. You want more? You want some alfalfa now? Fine, I'll give you some. Hold on. You stop it right there. Yeah, you're, you're not coming in here right now. I'm gonna give her some alfalfa hay so she'll be entertained. This is not painful, but it is uncomfortable, it, uh, meaning this is something that they have no idea what you're doing. And if you feel like you can hurt them, uh, just grab the leg, which is what they usually move. Okay. Kind of going overboard on this side, so I'm gonna leave a little funky line over there. I don't care, and she doesn't care. It's all in the name of keeping her clean. If you go against the hair, it, you kind of shave them super short, but if you are going with the hair, you don't. Or you're not, really. Now, she's still eating, but she's being difficult. And I wanna leave this part in, because I wanna show you that uh, if you are kind of slow in the beginning, they turn into these little devils. And usually, it's <laughs> I mean, I shaved Clara, and she was kind of fidgety, but usually first fresheners are the worst. Um, another thing that I've noticed is that when they're first time moms, they're a little bit more fidgety at the time of feeding babies. Not all of them, but some are. And I mean, if you're looking at this girl right now, she is being really difficult. So what I'm thinking is that I want the babies to find the teeth easier. And um, it sounds silly because I mean, it's hair and I'm sure they would find it eventually. But it's been so good. When I shaved um, Briere and Gaia, it was so much easier for the babies to find the teeth. They were on the teeth and no, I mean, they could find it way better. And I like things cleaner too because I'm a freak, basically. So I am, um, and the more you do this, the more you keep her here, I mean, she's gonna be fidgety, but the more she'll be used to the sound of uh, what you're doing. It's just, she's not used to it, she's never got it done before, and so she's getting used to it. But if you push it enough, it's like the milking. Uh, if you don't let them win, they'll eventually give in and listen, which is never easy on a goat. Especially a first freshener, in my humble opinion. But let me show you. Sir, there's nothing here for you. So I kind of shaved the side. And I'm going to continue. I'm going to shave this part right here. But now you can kind of see her fore uh, her fore otter and see how long it was. Uh, and now you can see better her. Look at this beautiful. Look at this. Beautiful first freshener otter. I just cannot contain myself. 
again. This is gonna change by kidding. She's upset right now. <laughs> it's all right. I'm not gonna mess with you anymore. This is all the hair that I got. And uh, again, this is not my favorite thing to do because then hair flies all over. But now you can see the definition right there in the middle. It's like a little indentation. And that's kind of showing me how her medial ligament is uh, either strong or weak. Right now it looks strong. And so I cannot wait. There's still two more weeks to go, I think. Can you believe it? You still have two more weeks. I mean, they're going to fly by. Before you know it, you'll be kissing your babies. She's like, not interested. Thanks for letting me know that I have two weeks of freedom. So... I am very happy with <laughs> at least the cleanup in this area. Like I said, I have a lot of chunks of things and weird lines that I left there, but I'm not too worried about that. What I want is this clean area so nothing really sticks too much to it. Although if you don't want to shave them, I learned this year that you can use coconut oil um, melted in the microwave or in a pot, I mean, whatever and then massage it and it will get all the dry blood and all the weird things that you get after kidding so that's something that I plan to do on her but the less hair or the less length that the hair has the more that it will be you know the easier that will be for me and shorter for her uh, she is definitely not hungry she would have been eating that alfalfa hay in like 2.3 seconds but she's not hungry so now um, as you can see it's a, a better view of her udder even though she's hiding it in this corner I'm gonna try to show you anyways so that's kind of my final look and if you look from the side her udder is starting to pop now I'm gonna try to finish this little area make it more even but look at beautiful otter I am so excited I cannot wait it's like I can't even think about the babies I'm just thinking about milking her and what her udder looks like which is rewarding if you are trying to breed better things into your own udders or your own herd it's just one of those things that you're like well it's 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 paying off and she is a rocky baby so I can see that the combination of Clara and Rocky this far in the other specifically uh, looks um, better than any other first freshener. And I did love Gaia's udder, but I and Gaia's udder was bigger at this point. Um, her udder developed at six weeks before kidding, so this is like two weeks before kidding, uh, which. I'm hoping that it means that she has girls in that belly. That's why she's not developing as much. But I am super, super, super excited to see how it continues to develop in the next two weeks. So you will see different updates with Athene. And um, yeah, kind of, I cannot, I cannot wait. I think this is the most anticipated birth. Uh, of all of the planet the plant births and you know all the breeding that we did in the fall she once she hit the weight that she should be for breeding then she stopped going into heat like I don't know or there were some months where she did go in heat but every time I would bring Dom, she was done with it. And so I'm like, what? Am I missing it? Am I, am I just not seeing her go into heat? Um, I mean, usually girls are very loud. My girls are very loud when they're in heat. They're like screaming for my attention, like bring me a man. I need one in my life. But Athene wasn't. I could tell that she was in heat because of the discharge and I could notice some differences in her behavior, but I just could not see it. Like, she wasn't being loud. And then all of a sudden, we had the accident on December 15th and I think we, we spent some time 
away and then when we came home I think it was the following Tuesday and when I got home got off the truck barely could walk she was screaming her head off by the gate and I thought oh my gosh she's in heat so <laughs> I I barely got a leash, went, grabbed him, brought him here. It took it took me like 30 minutes to walk all that. And uh, finally, she was willing. Like, I brought Dom before when she was in heat and she didn't want anything to do with it. Oh, look at that. Look at those babies kick. Let's see. Oh, my God. How cool is that? I think I do think you have more than one. They're probably going to be some really good soccer players. She's like, really? Is that what you think? Oh, no. I oh, look at that. That is not her breeding. <laughs> if you can see this. Oh, my goodness. A thing. Hi, babies. I'm sorry. I said I was really excited about your mama's otter and not so much about the babies. I wish that she at least throws <laughs> one um, silver. She is considered a uh, silver uh, buckskin. Uh, you can see she does have some cream and groaning. She does have some silver. She has a lot of white. So her dad usually throws at least one silver in each kidding. And, and, and it only makes sense. And excuse my face, but it only makes sense because um, silver is actually, it's an overlay, I think that's what it's called, and not a color. Um, basically, if you shave a silver, then you'll get black underneath. And it's funny because everyone kept saying when you shave them, you'll see their true colors and who has moon spots and who doesn't. You know, when you're in doubt, you're like, is that a moon spot? Because it's on black and it's brown and, you know. And I remember somebody saying, well, you know, it's um, actually if you shave them, you'll see where they are. If they have any. And um, so that makes sense that they do, because it's like black goats, they will always throw black goats. Um, not exclusively, but they will always throw. And it's just for fun, because I love silvers, I love how they look, and I think that with the good body confirmation, uh, when you see them in the ring, or when you see them like posted, um, somewhere for sale, you can see how majestic they look. They're just, there's something different over there. Just like, I'm over it. Please and thank you. I am a silver, but I have children that are moving in my belly and I am, I am sorry, but I want to go outside with my friends. Okay, you can go outside with your friends. You don't have to be here. But thank you for, thank you baby for saying hello to me.